Hello, welcome to Living Arts. I'm your host, Jackie Suarez. Thank you for tuning in. Tonight we've got a really special guest. We've got internationally known, legendary trumpet player, Shunzu Ono. Shunzu, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. I'm so glad to have you here. I have a million questions for you. Yep. And I'm, I'm just glad to have you here. Thank I've, you. I've been exposed to your music and I'm delighted to have you here. It's my honor, thank you. <laughs> so we're gonna, we're gonna do something very simple for my audience. We're gonna, okay. we're, we're gonna take it back to the beginning. Yep. What was it like to be exposed to jazz music as a child in Japan? Well, uh, jazz music wasn't that popular known to the people when I was growing up. Okay. So, um, first time I listened, I mean, I heard Western music was uh, my mother was running a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I was helping for the deliver the food, you know. Delivering the, food to yeah, workers. To the, to the uh, whoever, you know, the putting an order to the, you know, uh, fam in the family or different places. Right, and just to clarify for the audience, we want to say it was Gifu. Yeah, Gifu Japan. Gifu Japan. Right. Okay. So uh, we had a little small van in the house to, for the, for the, to use for the delivery for mm -hmm. the van. So one time uh, I went into the van and then just put some radios on and then there, were, there is, uh, I heard some uh, Western music wasn't really jazz. Was that a, your first exposure to jazz? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, pretty much. And a movie that I was on your website, and I saw something about a movie that you had seen where somebody was playing the trumpet. Right. That wasn't uh, jazz music. That was like a boy with trumpet. But okay. it's, it's this boy of um, the family was living in, up in a mountain. So the boy was uh, uh, playing, practicing trumpet every day. So, you know, so then... Um, that was my first exposure to the seeing the trumpet and I heard the trumpet. It spoke to you? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I didn't really uh, attract it at that time, but it's just uh, it's like somewhere in my mind, it's a, it was a, that picture of that scene was engraved somewhere. And when I went to start going to the middle school, then you, you know, many different uh, sports uh, club, you know, music, uh, uh, orchestra or uh, basketball, you know, whatever, you know. So then I had to join to some kind of activity. Right, you had to pick something out. Right. So then I, I saw a, a brass band a room and a guy, you know, had a, a, a trumpet instrument was there. So then, so then that image of the trumpet and then somewhere in my, you know, mind with that image of the, uh, in left in my life from that movie, just got in, you know, connected together, then I, uh, I was attracted to, you know, to pick my trumpet. No, it's funny you should mention that because I saw something when I was young called um, Old Man and the Sea mm. from Ernest Hemingway. Mm. And he became one of my favorite writers. Mm. And it stuck with me. Mm. So the things that you see when you're little right. really stick with you. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and it was something, just a story that he was writing about, and he became one of my favorite writers, and it had a profound impact on my life. Yeah. It had a, such a profound impact on my life. Right. I think uh, I so important to the, on a young age, and then what he or she would encounter, or a good teacher, or you know, any teacher, or a good friend, or a good mentor, or you know, different things, you know, I think it's so important to able to influence to the rest of the, his or her life, you know? Of course. Yeah. Of course, when you, when you meet someone that is doing the right thing or maybe not doing the right thing. Right, right. You know, right. they influence how you feel about things the rest of your life. Right, right. But the young people are still, they don't have, a, in, in not capable enough to judge that this is the right thing, so bad things. So then just go with it, you know. Oh, yeah. naturally, naturally, right. naturally, right. naturally. Right. So I want to jump to the period in your life yeah. where you started to pick up the trumpet. Right. When was that period? Uh, that was uh, when I was uh, middle school. Then I think I, that was like uh, 12 years old. 
For the, 12 I years want, old. Yeah. 12 years old. I would have thought that would have been a little bit later in your life for no, some reason. I wanted to pick up trumpet by then, but uh, all the trumpet was uh, taken and uh, seat, or trumpet seat, seat was uh, taken. So trumpet instrument wasn't available. So uh, then I had to pick other instrument to first. And then uh, in the middle school, I was actually, first my instrument was a euphonium, like a little small size of a, a tuba. The next instrument I uh, moved up to the, well, not really up to, but I moved to the playing trombone. And then, then, then uh, when I went to the high school, stood out the playing trombone first year, and the second year of the high school, and then a uh, senior graduated for, the, for the, then one, one trumpet uh, seat was uh, opened. So then I immediately I grabbed the trumpet seat. So that was your opening to play the trumpet, which was what you right. wanted to play? second year of my high school. After you finished playing, or after high school finished, right. what did you do with the trumpet after that? Well, uh, my uh, senior year of the high school, 
And at that time, uh, like late 1960 something, I forgot exactly year, but uh, many uh, nightclub uh, cabaret was in uh, Japan. So in every cabaret, they had a, a band. So uh, I met, uh, I was going to the uh, jazz coffee shop because of a uh, reason why is because uh, when I was uh, playing the trombone, uh, I don't know my pronunciation is correct on a, a, a Glenn Miller. Glenn Miller, right. you're right on, you're right on yeah. the, the mark player. on that one. Yep. So uh, when I saw that movie, it was like a, a Louis Armstrong, a Benny Goodman, or the many many great jazz musician was appearing at, in a, that movie. So uh, that was uh, had a great impact on me. So then I was really, I I went to see that. Glenn Miller's story like um, seven or eight times because I really, I really enjoyed that movie. Because you really liked it. Yeah. So, uh, um, so uh, I started going to the little jazz coffee shop in the like, Gifu, like a very suburb in Japan. But a jazz coffee shop is like a, they like a pretty dark place and they serve me coffee. But once you buy one coffee and then you can, um, uh, you can stay sit, there to the endless sit there all hours, day. all day, but just <laughs> listening to the uh, jazz music. So then I so met you could sit there and listen to the music, and you could you could play there. Yeah, yeah, I could play there too. But I mean, no live music, but just records, just listening to records. Oh, okay. So you couldn't play there. No, no. But uh, oh, okay. when uh, some professional musician working in a nightclub was hanging in uh, those uh, jazz coffee shop and and uh, during uh, daytime and uh, afternoon. So uh, when I was there, and a guy said, hey, kids, what do you do, you know? So yeah, I play trumpet, you know? Oh, wow. So I said, yeah, come down, to bring your horn. Come down to the you know, club, the way, uh, nightclub, the cabaret he was, where he was working. So and then I brought my trumpet, and then I went there. So actually, that nightclub became my uh, biggest school. To, I was able to get education of the playing jazz music. Jazz, in order to play jazz music, you have to know the name of the chord change, hum, hum, harmonic structures, you know, the reading and music, and those things. So uh, those professional musicians, once I ask uh, things, I have so many different questions. So then they, you know, uh, told me everything. So I really learned everything pretty much in the nightclub. In the nightclub? Yeah. So uh, Were you getting paid at the nightclub? Uh, eventually, they started paying me a little bit because of, uh, uh, first of all, I was just going there to sitting in. But uh, then I, I was a student, high school student. But uh, um, um, they are that they get a certain amount of the money from the club. And then, but I was a high school student, so once they hire me, they can just give me just a little money. So <laughs> the bandit, he could make a little extra box in his pocket. So. Uh, he finally, I mean, he hired me some, you know, few months. So on uh, that time, one evening, um, a very great uh, trumpeter, he became my kind of mentor. And, you know, so he, he was visiting a um, uh, friend of him was in uh, working in a band leader, uh, was in the nightclub in the Gifu. Then he, this guy, he heard me was, was playing in, in a stage. Then uh, he, uh, when we finished uh, uh, between the set, then he asked me, to, "Hey, kids, um, uh, when you finish school, just give me a call." You know. So then he gave me his uh, Art name. Art Blakely. No, not not just a Japanese uh, person. Oh, a Japanese person. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So he gave me his uh, name and the phone number. So then when I finished my high school, then immediately I, I uh, made a call to him. Then I visited his uh, uh, next town. It's, uh, I was I, I my hometown was uh, named name of town called Gifu. Then next uh, big town was name name of the city called Nagoya. It's a really big city. Mm -hmm. So uh, soon after my I finished high school, then I made his, my call, phone call to the, this guy. Then I went to his coming over to my house. Then I went to his house. And he introduced me to some uh, band where he was working. Then I started working with him to the way he was working. So that, that's my after my high school. So uh, that's how uh, my uh, in a career was it able to develop. Advanced. Yeah, advanced. Yeah, advanced. Yeah. So you were known pretty much prior to 
the one guy that I mentioned being one of the best trumpet players in Japan. Yeah, the, uh, at that time. In, in at the that, my area. At that time. And, yeah. At that time. Right. So that's wonderful to know. Right. So let's fast forward it to yeah. the period where you met Art Blakely. Right. So um, I went up to, to Tokyo. Is a Tokyo that you know? Uh, so you met him in Tokyo. Uh, Art Blakey? Yeah. Yes. Uh, one day, uh, 1973, um, Art Blakey who was very famous in Japan. So Art Blakey and Jazz Messengers, uh, they was coming to Japan every year. So then um, uh, one day they had a, a TV show, and then the trumpeter. He could not come into Japan, so uh, but Art Blakey, he needed, he wanted to have a trumpeter on this particular TV show, so uh, I was uh, uh, make a long story short, and I ended up to the plane with him in uh, this TV show, and then after that we finished the show, then Art Blakey told me that uh, I should come to New York. Because when I started listening, going to the jazz coffee shop in, in high school, I was really listening to Art Blakey 
and the Gilevans, the Mars Davis, you know, that, those things, you know, so. Uh, yeah. Uh, when I, uh, I had a uh, chance to play with Art Blake, it was like a, you know, like a, like a dream come true, you know. So then, uh, then, then, then after the set, Art Blake would say, come to New York, you know, and then why, wow, you know. You must have been like, I'm not sure if I'm ready for this, or you don't know if you want to leave Japan, you know. What, what, were, what was going through your mind? Well, <laughs> uh, so honestly, around that time, I was uh, going to form uh, your own my band. own band with a really good friend of mine, a great piano player. That we, you know, uh, 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 was trying to form a band together with my friends. Mm -hmm. So then uh, I was working with a pre uh, prestige prestigious group at that time in Japan. Also, piano player. He was working with a very famous group at that time. But he and me, oh, we decided to gonna form a band together. Then, you know. So then Art Blakey came. So I, for me, it was like a really, I was so attracted to starting a band with this, my friend, you know, piano player. So uh, 1973, I did not come to New York. And then 1974, in January, Art Blakey came to Japan again. So then that time, Art Blakey told me, to the, why don't you come to New York, you know? So then, um, Somehow, uh, that time, uh, me and him, a uh, friend of mine, was going to start our own band, but for some reason, uh, we bumped into this, some kind of uh, problem, so then we couldn't. So then I decided that, okay, I'm going to come to New York. So then, so uh, I uh, came to New York on uh, March 13th, 1974. Mm -hmm. So that was the day it all started. Yeah. So what did you do when you came to New York? Uh, I didn't know anyone except Ablick. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I just uh, went straight to Ablick's place. Okay. Did you guys have a tour that you were embarked on, or? Well, um, I started working with him, and then uh, I went to a few uh, tours. But uh, Ablick is the international. The internationally known uh, active musician, active group, Jazz Messengers. But at that time, I did not have a, uh, a green card or you know, uh, appropriate uh, uh, visa situation to, in order to able to going out and coming into the United States. So again. it was difficult for you. Right, it was so difficult I, for you. Right, and I could not continue to work. You couldn't continue with working with him. Right. So listen, you know, we've been talking for a little bit amount of time and unfortunately we've run out of time. Right. So you know what I want to do is give my audience just a little information about you that I think is important for them to know. That you've, you know, overcome adversity in your life. Yep. You know, you were in a horrible car accident. Right. And you had to learn how to play the trumpet in a different way and make a different sound. Right. And you've also overcome stage four throat cancer. Right. You know, and we're all glad that you're here. Right. You know, and thank God because the music that you make is so important. Right. You know, so Shinzu, tell our audience a little bit about that, about your recovery from the cancer and the sound that you're making now. Well, of the, how I was thinking you know, my, my, uh, evaluating my own trumpet playing, um, because of our, when I was young, and a lot of part is uh, ignorant, you know, didn't have much uh, experience, and then didn't know much about uh, what music should be sung, you know, that kind of thing. So the, I didn't have a maturity to the, uh, uh, of the, as a person, and also knowledge, or, you know, everything. So uh, I thought I, I was playing pretty good, you know, <laughs> myself <laughs> when I was young. So uh, what, was, what was your question there? Yeah. Well, let's do this. Let's do this. Um, we'll follow each other on Facebook and do a little something on my Facebook page. Yeah. And we'll continue this conversation. Right. Um, I know you've got some dates coming up. Right. In the Hudson Valley area, in the New York area, right. um, April 8th, you're at the Bean Runner, and right. April 16th, you're at um, Blue Note. Right. So we'll direct everybody to your webpage. Yeah. Um, but it's been such a pleasure having you on my show. Yeah. 
Um, I'm a big fan. Yeah. I will continue to be a big fan. Yeah. And I hope to see you again. Thank you so much. Terrific. To my Living Arts audience, I hope you've enjoyed this. Follow this man. Continue to follow this man. This is a true artist. I hope you enjoyed this. I'll talk to you soon. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.